Oh, that's your page 44. Guys, you're up next. You're up next. Faith Baptist guys. They're saying, I will serve thee, page 44. I will serve thee because I love thee. You have given life to me. Grab your mics, guys. Grab your mics. Could not even stop. 
this camp with just our church, but it would never be as good. And we are a little selective. Uh, we had a church come one time, we just said, thanks for coming, but uh, don't come back. They just, they weren't us. They had a stinking attitude. They didn't want to be on the team and be a part of things. And and uh, I feel like this is a, an easy group to work with. And uh, you from other churches, um, it helps our camp helps our teenagers. It's good for every teenager to know that there's other teenagers like them. And it's just a good thing, but I appreciate you um, 
uh, especially those of you that travel a long ways. Brother Moffat, how long did it take you to get here? Six? How about Brother Jesus? He said six and a half. You want to go to six and three quarters? <laughs> All right, we got six and three quarters. You want to go to seven? You guys? I, that's what I was thinking. Here a little bit further. Anybody more than seven hours to get here? That's a long time. Is that because you walked? Because Brother Adam was driving. He's always late. <laughs> Five years old, met him knocking on doors. Amen. First Sunday he came to church on a bus. His parents did not trust our bus, so they drove their car behind the bus and followed him all the way to church. And everybody ended up getting saved. And the whole family, all the ministry, siblings in the ministry over the years. And his sister was a missionary in China for a while. And just a great thing. People matter. And thank you so much, all of you, for being here. Um, when you go to the Olympics... There is always, can I use one of these other mics too? Does it matter? I've got a green one. A little green work. Hello. There's, uh, that works a little bit. Is it better than this one? That works. I just need to move around a little bit. Um, in the Olympics, somebody wins. The one who wins is the one who performs the best. They ran the fastest, jumped the highest, scored the most, most points, played the best ping pong. All of, so many funny games they've got now in Olympics. And I think, is that a, come on, that can't be a Olymp pickleball Olympic events. And what's that game where they kick the soccer ball on the ping pong table? Have you seen that? I mean, it's pretty impressive, but come on, Olympics. Picture the big, beefy Olympic guys in the stadium carrying the torch, and you, you got a ping pong paddle? <laughs> I'll tell you, the little Chinese girls, they're bad. It's <laughs> 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 like Bruce Lee with nunchucks in the <laughs> Don't tell me all people are created equal. I'm not playing. If you're a little Chinese person, I'm not playing ping pong with you. I'll play basketball with you. <laughs> But the point is, whatever you play or competed in, you get an award that you earned through your performance. And when it comes time for the people to stand up on the platforms to get the silver and the bronze and the gold medal, the gold medalist gets a better reward than the one who was in second. They got a silver. The one who was third, they got a bronze. And the one who can't play the game at all, who got to watch it on TV. Now, there's nothing wrong with you not being good at something else. But we're going to look tonight at some scripture. God rewards his people. And there is a day coming that you will be rewarded for your service and the quality of your service for God. Most of you know Brother Cowling and Ms. Cowling left, but um, I've, I've known the Cowling parents, Pete Frieda Cowling, since I started our church, I guess. And I don't know, one time they were running nine buses. Does that sound about right? To pick up all the people on their one bus route. Now, I think everybody who runs a bus route is going to be rewarded. Amen. Amen. But if it takes nine buses to bring in all your workers, you're getting more rewards. That's right. Let's just be, let's just be very candid here. The reward day is coming. Amen. There is a day coming. Jesus is going to reward his people. Let's look there at the memory verse so we memorize it. Let's look at it there. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as 
His work. Oh, His work. According as His what? Work. work. So according to your, what if you just have a really good attitude? Does He reward you according to your attitude? No. He rewards you according to your what? Work. work. You say, I'm just the nicest person in the church. Great. Please sit down while we reward the workers. Now, if you can work and be nice, God bless you. But God rewards workers. His son died for souls. His son left heaven, came to earth. Lived 33 struggling, frustrating years. He was stripped, beaten, spit on, beard plucked out, abused, hung naked before the world. You want a reward because you planted petunias? I'm sorry, I like petunias, but I just don't see any rewards in the Bible for petunia planting. Now I'm going to be unkind. No, I'm not. I'm mean, very nice. Go back a few pages to 2 John. Can you find that? Right before the Revelation, 2 John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, and Revelation. Look at 2 John. Second John. Now, have you ever met somebody who was busy doing something for God, and then they just got busy with life? And they got out of church, away from God. Now look, you're still saved. When you get saved, you're in the hand of Jesus. Amen. You're in the hand of God. You couldn't get unsaved if you wanted to. Because your soul was purchased by the blood of Christ, and you're not your own. You belong to God. He bought you with the precious blood of his own son. And if you ever were saved, you always are saved. Amen. You're safe. But we all probably know somebody who got saved, maybe they got baptized, got busy in church for a while, and maybe they got hurt and got out of church. Let me tell you something. I'm not giving up my rewards before God because you hurt my feelings. There's a day coming when he's going to be rewarding be rewarding his people. Are you going to throw that day away because someone was mean to you? They, they, they defriended you on Instagram. I don't know if you have friends on Instagram. I don't know about that stuff. Look at the verse. Look at verse 8. Third, second John, verse 8. Look to yourselves. You pay attention to you that we lose not those things which we have wrought. You know what wrought? They worked. Look at the end of verse 8. But that we receive a full reward. So here you are, you're working, and you're gaining some rewards. And then you just, let's just be candid. My parents got a divorce. My best friend betrayed me. My pastor quit and ran off and did something whatever. Are you going to give those rewards up? Look, just like the Olympics, the day is coming. Hebrews says, seeing then that we've got this, we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us run with patience the race that's set before us. Looking into Jesus, not looking into your pastor or your neighbor, or your parents. Some of you, your parents don't go to church. Some of you, your parents, or maybe they've got issues, problems, drugs, alcohol, crime, whatever. I don't know, but I know this. You're not to look to them. You're to look to Jesus. Amen. The author and finisher of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Now look, just like Jesus had to deal with some problems, You've got some problems. Now yours aren't as big as his, but yours are big. But I'll tell you what, don't throw away your rewards. Right. Yeah. Look at the verse again, verse 8. He says in 2 John verse 8, look to yourself. This is between you and God. Not you and your sister, your brother, 
the youth director, the pastor, whoever, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. I want it all. Amen. If I earned it, I want it. That makes sense? So if he says, look to yourselves that we lose not what we've wrought, then you can lose rewards. Are you all right with that? Over in Revelation, we don't have time to turn to all these verses, but Revelation says to be careful lest some man take your crown. Hey, what, what's your name? Bronson. Bronson, come on, people. Yeah, all right. Let's just pretend I'm busy. Stand over here. I am busy serving God, and I've got these rewards. And there are future rewards yet to be earned as I faithfully serve God. And here is a guy who just, he drives a truck and delivers Coca-Cola or whatever. He's the good Christian guy who works his job. And I just say, I'm tired of it all. I'm tired of Christians. They're a bunch of jerks. And can I tell you, they are some jerks. And I just throw them in the town. And I give up my Sunday school class, my bus route, my youth department. I'm a youth director. I'm a, I'm a missionary or whatever. Ronson comes along and says, you know what? There's a big need. There's a hole there. Somebody left a big old hole. And he steps into that hole. And he starts doing the work I was doing. And God says, well, look there. Never thought that guy could do anything. <laughs> hey, angels, get his name on the list. He's competing. Oh, man. Hey, Gabriel, get that guy's rewards, put them on his account. Amen. That makes sense? You be careful that no man take your reward. Now, whether that's the rewards I already earned or the rewards I was going to earn, it doesn't matter. He's getting what I could have or should have had, but I quit. God's tough. Salvation is the sweetest, most wonderful thing in all the world. Amen. You just believe. Amen. Amen. I believe you're saved. Amen. I'm not a very good Christian. You're saved. That is the Amen. most wonderful thing. But after that, God is saying, how much do you want? How much do you want when you get to the, to the award ceremony? The great Olympic awards when we begin this. Look, we got we got a lot of scriptures to look at, and I've got to drive home. And um, look back a few pages to Hebrews chapter 11. Just We're just going backwards. Hebrews chapter 11. You just go back a few pages at a time. You'll find Hebrews 11. Folks that have been in our church for years have heard me talk about this. Often. I want you to understand as a teenager that goes soul winning and you're faithful to church. You may not have a driver's license and you can't pick people up and bring them to church, but you read your Bible and you pray and you go to church. And you go out teen soul winning. You go around, maybe you sing in church or maybe you shake hands with visitors or you're friendly to visiting teenagers or your vacation Bible school comes and you help do whatever, teach a lesson, win a soul, whatever it might be. Look, look there. Look at, I don't know what verse we're turning to. 1126, I think. Yeah, there it is. Moses is, this is talking about Moses down in Egypt. He was the son of Pharaoh's daughter, wealthy, heir to the throne. He could have lived in luxury on earth. He could have had all of the wealth of Egypt. But look what he says in verse 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For he had respect under the recompense of the what? Lord. Moses stood there and looked at all the wealth of Egypt. He looked at all the earthly rewards. He looked at the throne and the fancy house and the cars. He was going to have his own Ferrari. He was going to uh, pulled by several horses. <laughs> and he said, you know what? I'd rather take the reproach of Christ. Amen. Why? Because, verse 26 ends, for he had respect under the recompense of the reward. You know what he did? He stood there and said, hmm, 
rich on earth for about 20 years, and somebody's going to poison me, probably a woman. No offense, you know, Cleopatra and all those stories. She's going to want my money and that other guy. Or my, or my son, or my brother, or whoever, the cook. All the wealth of Egypt for about 20 years, and the rewards, the recompense, recompense means to get paid back. I take the reproach of Christ. God says, I'll pay you back for that. You get made fun of for going to school, going to church, I'll pay you back for that. You get made fun of for the way you, you dress modest like a young lady, I'll pay you back for that. The recompense of reward. That means you are going to get paid back. You carry your Bible, walk out like some of the teenagers from our church here, and I'm sure there's many others, but they get on Sunday morning and they walk out of their house and they carry their Bible, and Amen. they get on a bus, and they yep. ride that bus in an oven. Amen. Yep. We got a couple of shuttles that had air conditioning. It don't work. All it means is the windows don't go down. <laughs> and you come out, obviously dressed for church, carrying a Bible, get on an, a, a mobile oven. God up in heaven says, hey, mark that down. Mark that down. They esteem the reproach of Christ greater what, when they considered. They considered this thing. Moses said, hmm, hmm, hmm. Hey, Pharaoh, I'm going to see you in about 40 years. I'm going to burn your house down. Remember that? He goes up, shepherds for 40 years, comes down. Water, blood, lice, flies, locusts, hail of meringue, whatever that is. I thought meringue's on a pie. And then, and then at the hand of Moses, he drowns Pharaoh and every one of his soldiers. And God says, and I'm not done yet. Wait till you get home with me. There's a reward day. Just like in the Olympic events, Depending on what you do, it determines your reward. Go back to chapter 10. We're in Hebrews chapter 10. Go there, uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Look at chapter 10 of the book of Hebrews, verse 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of what? Reward. reward. Cast not away therefore... <coughs> Your confidence, which which is the object of which? What's he talking about? Cast on away your what? Confidence, which have great. You're going through your life, you're 14, 16, 18, and you're sure you're going to church. Listen, I believe that book, I believe that preacher, I believe, I believe what my parents taught me or what my bus captain taught me. I believe it, I believe it. Now you're out of high school. You're going to cast away your confidence? You can't. You can be saved and cast away. You say, you know what? I just don't know if I buy that. Watch it. Your confidence has great recompense of what? Mm, there's that word reward again. Do you know God is into rewarding faithful Christians? He doesn't care if you're married or single or pretty or ugly or whether you've got muscles or you're, you know, a broomstick with toothpicks sticking out of both sides. God doesn't care. You know, you might be able to sing like these guys up here, or maybe you can't sing like those girls that sang before. Hey, look at Jack, man. He can play the piano. Man, God be good to him. Hey, God's going to give every one of us a chance to work for him. And you work the way you work, I'll work the way I work. You don't have to be me. I don't have to be you. And you know what? When we started camp for 39 years ago, I, I did all the preaching. I ran all the games. I ran all the competition. I was the first one up to make sure everybody was awake. I was the last one to bed. I remember our winter camp. I had a big sheepskin. I'd get up early in the morning before anybody else was up and go out in the snow, cover myself with that sheepskin, and pray and beg God to bless our camp. Amen. We had 20 and 30 teenagers. 
Now I sleep in, drink Diet Dr. Pepper, eat chocolate. <laughs> and I watch you play basketball. <laughs> and I have to keep moving this right knee, otherwise it stiffens up and it don't work anymore. But I don't have to be 30. I just don't want to give up my, what's the word in that verse? Before the reward. What do you get reward for? Confidence. confidence. I don't want to sell out my confidence. Well, I just don't know if this Christian life is worth it after all. Can you imagine Titus? Or let's go to Demas. Demas traveled with the Apostle Paul. I mean, the guy who wrote half your New Testament. The guy who started churches all over Asia Minor. The guy who's a crazy man. You know how many rewards he chalked up? Chalked them up. Then one day he said, you know what? I am done. The Apostle Paul's crazy. And I'm not sure it's all true anyway. And at that point, you give up your confidence, you give up your what? Rewards. Everybody good with that? Yes, Do you see that in the scriptures? Amen. So you can earn rewards and you can lose rewards. You can give up rewards. Now you're still going to go to heaven. Once you get saved, you're locked in. Your address is on Golden Street, whatever house or whatever. But the fact is, we've got to understand, God is looking to reward and to bless His people. Let's go back a few pages more to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Just keep flipping back. You'll see first in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Somebody took it out of my Bible. There we go. You've probably seen sporting events. You probably played. You were down there playing basketball today and somebody fouled you. Brother McCray was looking at Instagram on his phone instead of being a referee. <laughs> and you said, ah. You gotta have to look. What? <laughs> You're not gonna call that? What's that? <laughs> You know, we've all done it, unless you've never played. I've done it as a fan in the stands. <laughs> My wife, she would move away. Some of you know Pastor Kirk Beard. You don't want to be near him in the bleachers. He's the worst fan in the world. Man. He's a great Christian, but he's a terrible man in the bleachers. I'm sure he's been thrown out of some gyms. <laughs> he's a, I don't know, but we're good friends. But he is wild in the bleachers. I'm going to come down and beat you, Rev. I'll make you swallow that whistle. <laughs> Somebody comes up, and uh, I'll use Bronson again. Bottom of your Bronson. We're playing basketball, and uh, the hoop is over there, and somebody just shoots. And the ball's coming this way, so it's going to bounce back this way. And so I'm going to box him out. And so I swing an elbow or two. Then I go up and grab the ball. Now, do you notice where his, his jaw is and my elbow is? So I bring that elbow down. This is slow motion. <laughs> and he says to the ref you know what I'm not striving lawfully look at 2 Timothy 2.5 and if a man also strive for the masteries he's talking about Olympic events literally here if a man strive for the mastery, for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. You know there's some people who are corrupt. Zero crown. They say, it's just not right. This and this happened. Yeah. And there's a judge. And he sees every foul. When we were in high school, public school, not saved, um, 
I didn't play football because it was right before basketball. And I didn't know if I could play football, but I knew I could play basketball. And there are certain parts of the body that don't always work when football players break them. But I watched the football players. They'd line up, and when we just needed a yard or two, most of you wouldn't understand this, but I grew up in the mountains, logging, everybody had a hunting rifle and a chainsaw. And, uh, and everybody chewed tobacco, but me and my wife. Some of the girls chewed tobacco. So you're on the line of scrimmage lined up, and they're ready to snap the ball. And if you're on the offensive team and you just need a yard or two, they're all lined up, and one of the boys go, Poof, and just shoot a big old mouthful of chewing tobacco on the guy's hand. And you know what the guy does? Jerks that hand back. Five yards. We've got our first down. That's not right. But it works. Now you may get the yardage on earth. You may get the cutest girl or the most handsome boy. But there is a judge who judges righteously. And he will only crown those who strive lawfully. You see anything here? There's reward. Jesus says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according to how he works. But you better work faithfully. You better work within the rules. Strive lawfully. And you can't cast away your confidence. See, so you're putting some pressure on us. I just want you to know what you're going to face. Every one of us, if you're saved, every one of us is going to face the judgment seat of Christ one day to receive those things done in our bodies, our work. And I want you to be rewarded. The great thing about rewards is I'm not competing with Bronson. I'm competing with faithfulness. And he's competing with faithfulness. So if we're running the 100 meters, he and I both can't get the gold medal. But before God, we can both be faithful and work hard, and we can both get the gold medal. Because we worked, as God gave us the ability. Some of you, your parents won't let you go to maybe everything that goes on in church. Go to everything you can. And God will take care of it. Let me show you another verse or two. There's so much on this. Somewhere I lost my, my clock here. You need to strive lawfully. Go back a couple of pages more to 1 Corinthians. We'll skip a couple. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. There's 1 and 2 Corinthians. You want the first letter to the Corinthian people. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Let me assure you, you little, you're a sixth grade. I don't know, 70 pound. I was a 70 pound when I was about kindergarten. <laughs> I do remember when I broke 100 pounds, I was sixth grade. And um, anyway, I hit six feet in eighth grade. And, um, but anyway, you may be a little bitty guy or girl just getting started. You may be a college age young person. You may be out of college. You may be one of the workers here. But we will stand before God. Right. And God's not against us. God is giving us opportunity for rewards. Now on earth, you know what we want? We want a car. We want a house. We want a wife or a husband or a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever the opposite of what we are, obviously. Amen. Amen. We want people to like us. We want to belong to something. Every teenager wants to belong to something. That's why teenagers go and, and join gangs and paint their hair green or whatever other weird thing. You just want to fit somewhere. Can I tell you something? Here's the best place you'll ever fit. Yes, sir. Yeah. Just jump in with the weirdos. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And we're no more weird than the people out of the world are. Right. Yes, sir. I've seen them. They question their gender. Right. You want to talk weird? That's weird. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. I just don't know if I feel like you. Shut up. Yeah. I feel you. You need to go see the school counselor. 
they might not know it either. <laughs> Look at 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 9, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race, Paul used lots of Olympic illustrations, they that run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. He's always talking about prizes and rewards. So run, he says to you, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Do you know what God expects of you? If you want to master this thing, if you really want to be the winner in the spiritual battle, you're going to have to be temperate. Look at that verse. Verse 25, every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. You can't be out of control. You can't be running off being stupid and being ridiculous and doing dumb things. And you need to even this Christianity out and be steady. Day in, day out, day in. That doesn't mean you can't have fun. I remember I was with Mrs. McRae and my wife and I and a group of us were in, in Switzerland and here I am, a pastor, and I, we're going down the sled hill together. Russell Anderson's up in his room looking down. He said, I see you guys. I, I want to be up there sled with those kids. It doesn't mean you can't have fun. See, why didn't you ski? Because when I ski, I would die. <laughs> they put trees in the way of where I ski. And my skis don't come with brakes. I've tried it, and it's not very good. He says... Look at verse 25. Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. You got that little gold medallion or bronze or silver medallion. You know what? Somebody could break in your room and steal it and it is gone tomorrow. But look at that verse. But we, the last part of verse 25. But we, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. We, an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You could, like I said earlier, you could lose your confidence. You could just, I don't care anymore. Somebody else is going to take your reward. 